what I like about this hero is, is that we get to see all the struggles that am I going crazy? What the hell is this thing? I don't want the responsibility of these three girls. I'm taking the responsibility of these three girls and now I got to fight this lunatic. Lorenzo, how you doing, sir? Good, I'm doing excellent, man. Look, man, Madam Web is a fun comic book movie, but you know what? I really like the fact that it's like an action thriller, but also has this vibe of like Final Destination in it. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting, yeah. It does, right? Yeah, sure, when you say it, I go, yeah, of course. So I like the fact that this doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really have any ties to the storylines in the comic books, but Madam Web does offer a fresh take on this established hero. How did you... Can you talk about balancing staying true to the source material while offering a fresh take on the character? It's the balance that you try to pull off in a situation like this. On some levels, it gives you tremendous freedom because you have the room to do it. On other levels, it's a little more terrifying because the fans will kill us if we, you know, if we don't get it right. We'll kill ourselves, true, obviously. But uh, the truth is you are putting this character out there that pe the, the fans know and have a perspective on, and we're presenting it in a very different light. You know, But that was the attraction to the property was the idea of a character who was blind, like how did she get there, you know, and what what is that? And the, I think the advantage for us, or I should say the attraction, was what a vulnerable character to become an all-knowing character in a sense. One of the themes I love about this film that, that really affects Cassie and, um, and the other three uh, is the theme of empowerment. Can you talk about that a little bit? It's obviously a female empowerment movie in many levels, but it's also a hero empowerment movie. Absolutely. And I think one of the lessons I learned on Salt was I don't see heroes anymore as gender specific. I see them as fulfilling what we want them to achieve, right? And so I expect the hero to win the day. I expect the hero to do the right decision here. I What I like about this hero is, is that we get to see all the struggles that... Am I going crazy? What the hell is this thing? I don't want the responsibility of these three girls. I'm taking the responsibility of these three girls, and now I got to fight this lunatic, you know? So you get to go on the, in a way, the true hero's journey. I also love the approach to Ezekiel Sims' character because he almost feels like a slasher movie Spider Man villain. Um, but can, was Kane Parker ever uh, considered to be in this film at all? I think we looked at everything, honestly, in terms of the lore of it. Um, Ezekiel just turned out to be the character that we found most appealing. And the, the sort of um, what was so great is he's not a character who wants world domination. He's right. not a character that wants the traditional things that these villains usually have in this kind of movie. And that's why Ezekiel became that. You know, he's, he's very human. Like, I don't want to be killed. Absolutely. I'm going to kill those people who are going to kill me. And I think that's a, you know, I hope the audience finds that as a fresh thing and therefore a different kind of hero to enjoy, a, a villain to enjoy. Madam Web really opens the doors to the massive Marvel universe, not just the MCU, but the massive Marvel universe that exists. Um, when you were making this film, did you approach it with a larger universe in mind? Or was it just that we're so cognizant of the larger universe, but we specifically tried to stay away from it, honestly, because I think for me anyway, and I asked Jay too, is we really wanted to make it about her and her journey. And the more you start paying attention to the larger thing, the less you're paying attention to the, to the lead and her journey. So that's what was important to us. So it's not like I don't like the universe or SJ doesn't like the universe. It's we didn't want to do it. I have to ask this. I have an Arashikage tattoo. I'm a huge G.I. <laughs> Joe fan. I love that. I got, I got a Cobra Commander one up here. Fantastic. I got to know. Uh, we saw a tease after Rise of the Beast with the G.I. Joe. Yeah. When are we actually going to see the G.I. Joe back on screen crossing over with Transformers? Well, we're hoping that that will be in the summer of 26. Ah, I love it. I love it. Um, now, I got to ask you, Madam Web, like I said, opens up the universe for the, for the different Spider-Men to come in. If you could team up any of these characters with the previous any of the previous Spider-Men, who would that be? The honest truth is we don't want to pair them up. Because, really? Yes, because, I mean, look, that may change over time, and it may change when she becomes the blind character, but we didn't want, um, for me, what I'm starting to find about these larger universes is it's almost a burden to know all the different things, and again, we're trying to make it her journey, right. so, you know, in some, in some respects... You know, I'd want a new villain, I want a new experience, I want a new challenge for her, but I don't want it to play out in, in, in the larger universe that is available to us. Will we eventually take it? You never know where you're going to go. 
But I think it's been a, an advantage for this movie that we didn't do it. So I, we're probably going to stick to our guns. There you go. Well, Lorenzo, thank you so much for your time, man. Thank Very you. insightful. I appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Can't wait. 2026, man. Hope you do it.